All right, all right, all right, fam. Welcome back to another Millennial in Debt video. This is so quick, random, and impromptu. So bear with me on the audio. I didn't have time to do a big setup. I just wanted to come straight to the point, give y'all the information, and let y'all know what is going on in the black finance world. First, if you are new here, please hit the subscription button below and turn on that notification bell so you get a every single time I upload a video. The title suggests or the title lets you know that there is something major happening in the black financial world. World, Two black owned banks are merging together, bringing their powers together to make, you know, financial freedom, generational wealth, a lot more accessible for my people, right? Now this merger will not be finalized until January of 2021 and the public will, uh, the public, <laughs> And the merger will create a publicly owned company, which you will be able to buy stocks and shares from on the New York Stock Exchange. So let's reel it on in, back it on up, and start from the beginning before I get all to the good and fun and exciting stuff. The two banks that are merging are Los Angeles' Broadway Federal Bank, which I have talked about in this video over here, where I talked about black-owned uh, stocks and banks that you should bank with and invest in, and <laughs> Washington, D.C. City First. Bank. Now, Broadway Financial, like I mentioned, is being traded publicly and the company after they merge will also be traded publicly. With this merge, they're going to be have they're going to have one billion dollars in assets. That is far more than any black owned bank has ever owned in our recent history. So why is this a big deal? Why do we care? Why am I bringing this you know, information to you so quickly if it's not even going to happen until January 2021? The reason that this is such a huge major deal is because black owned banks suffer or their biggest challenge is a lack of capital. That means they're not able to loan as much. That means they're not able to be as big of a financial uh, juggernaut, so to speak, in the financial world, right? We had 44, correct, we had 44 black owned banks back in 2001. And currently right now we have 20 one. Those 21 banks are responsible for $4.85 billion in our country, right? There is also currently 33 Latino owned banks. Let me double check for you. Yes, 33 Latino based banks that cover about $109 billion and 77 Chinese, or I should say Asian owned banks that cover $172 billion. I'll put the it's hard to remember all these numbers in summertime, right? And I know that sounds like a lot of money because it is a lot of money, but let me just put that into perspective for you. As of July 2020, so a month ago, Wells Fargo, one of the largest banks in our country, is covering $1.2 trillion, right? So we see the huge gap. We see why it's such a big challenge for Black-owned banks to really thrive because they're, they don't have enough capital. They don't. So what is what can black owned banks do? Essentially what black owned banks need to survive and thrive with enough capital is to open more checking accounts, open more saving account, savings accounts, open more mortgages, you know, uh, fund small businesses, things like that. But with the huge disparities that that occur in the black community and black wealth being such a difficult thing to achieve, or which I've mentioned and discussed on Instagram, which if you're not following, bam, hit that follow. It's in the link below in the description box, right? Black wealth is something that is is not often focused or discussed about, and it's very hard to build in this country for many, many, many systemic and institutional barriers, right? So if the money's not there, if it's not going into those banks, it's hard to generate capital. So with this merger, what this merger is doing is creating that capital. Now with this merger, right, so what's next? They're going to be focusing on three main things. And these are really the three main things that are going to make them a mainstay and make it possible to, for them to compete, especially in such expensive locations and expensive areas and such competitive areas as LA and DC. The first thing they're going to be focusing on is funding multifamily affordable housing. That's a key factor and that is going to help generate more uh, capital. The second thing they're going to be doing is focusing on increasing checking, savings, and mortgages, right? And like I've mentioned, Black-owned banks fund about 60% of Black-owned homes. Black people get more uh, loan approval from Black-owned banks. So the more mortgages they're approving, the better it is going to be for our community. The third thing that this merger is going to focus on is funding small businesses and non-profits, not-for-profit, non-profit. 
right? So those are the three main focuses of the merger in order to make them a mainstay, in order to make them a juggernaut in the financial world, in order to help increase black wealth. Now, my final thoughts, final words of wisdom, I suppose, this is a good thing. This is a first step of many that is going to help with a lot of the barriers and barricades that black people face in the financial world and dealing with personal finance. This is going to come to fruition, I think I said January, first quarter, first quarter of January, the first quarter of 2021. So that could actually be from January through March and what they're going to focus on and the fact that it is going to be a publicly traded company. These are all really good things. I already own stock in Broadway Financial. Um, probably gonna probably gonna buy some more because you know right but before you do any investing before you do any spending before you move any further please make sure to speak to a professional before you invest any of your money before you do anything with your money and have a blessed day you know thanks for stopping by bye